The road trip continues for the Cuse as they go on the road to take on Florida State, another tough opponent this week. And here with us is Caleb Okachukwu, defensive end. You may know him from the Mob podcast as well. So we get you ready for the matchup against Florida State. And tough stretch for you guys right now, dealing with some adversity, which comes for any football team. What's kind of your message to the younger guys on the team as you go through this rough patch a little bit? Well, we got to work. We have to do more. Um, starting with myself first, I, I hold myself to a high standard, but now it's time to hold myself to an even higher standard. I can't come out and have a bad day. I got to push myself to the max. Um, no matter how I'm feeling that day, I, I got to go out there and work no matter how tired I am. So um, I want them to see that more than hear my voice right now. I want them to see how hard I'm working and how hard I'm going every day. And you've talked a lot on the Mob podcast, you and Marlo, about preparation and what goes into kind of making sure that you're doing the right things throughout the week. When you talk about want, wanting them to see the work, is that what you mean, sort of the prep leading into the game a little bit? Yeah, I want them to see how focused I am when I come to the field. I want them to see how uh, my approach each and every play, regardless of how I'm feeling, even if I might feel like I'm hurt or I feel like I'm tired, I want them to see that approach every day. So um, right now I want to hold myself to a higher standard because uh, I think – I think uh, my voice is, is, is respected enough, so now I want them to see me work even more. Yeah, it's sixth year for you. You've been around the block, so I think that's the right message for sure. And I'm sure the preparation kind of starts with looking back at last week and sort of turning the page. What did you learn when you guys as a team reviewed the film against UNC? Uh, that we got to do more. Uh, we can't come out slow. Like, it's, it's, it, there's no exceptions anymore. There's no uh, if we come out fast or if we come out, you know, we need to come out fast and we're going to come out fast and we can't wait anymore. Uh, I think we've been waiting a little bit on both sides of the ball and I think it's time for us to come out with a purpose and with an intention every play. We talk about how it is your last year of eligibility and I've noticed, I mean, you always are a passionate guy during the game, but it does feel like you guys and some of the other leaders are kind of leaving it all out there this year. Is that kind of your mindset knowing it's the last go around? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's my last six games, so um, I think it's starting to hit me now that this is these are my last games of my college career. So um, why not? You know, I don't really see I don't really see a reason why I shouldn't leave it all out there. You know, I, I play it with passion regardless if you watch me on film. But <laughs> I think uh, I want to leave something. I want to leave my legacy. So that's what I that's what I'm doing right now. And is some of that just naturally because how you started your college career, you had a serious health scare at one point. Does that give you some perspective that? you know, now can't take anything for granted. Every game, you got to go out there and play with that passion. I think uh, even beyond the field, just in my, in my everyday life, uh, you can't really get too high, you can't really get too low. But I think for me, I've always played with passion. Uh, in high school, I was always a high energy kid. Um, I, was, I, was, I, was that way in I was that way when I came in, but obviously it adds more fuel to the fire when you go through something like that. But I think for me now, um, I learned what I needed to learn when I went through that injury. And I, I don't play the game in fear of that injury again. I just... Um, that was a part of my story, and now it makes my story that much more greater. You've also switched numbers this year yeah. to number four. I heard you talking with Iffy on the podcast yeah. about new number, new him. Do you feel like uh, new you with a new number four this year as well? Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like it's a different me and number four. Uh, maybe just more, uh, like I think it's just more of the uh, completion of my career here. Uh, just, and just really just adding some more swag to me. That's all it is yeah. for nothing, nothing too crazy, but it's definitely a different me and four. Another guy who got swagged up, Leon Lowry, yeah. changed his number to number nine. He's been killing yeah, it out yeah, there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, me and him definitely talk every day, and we work hard. So he's definitely having a great year, and, and we want to keep him going and, and uh, keep getting him open so that we can keep making those plays. And I understand you, Marlo, and him have a little bet going on for yeah. sacks throughout the year, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> when I said that last week, I think everybody kind of took that out of proportion. It's not, it's not really not, like nothing crazy. It's just, it's really all in fun. Just, it's, yeah. a, it's a way to just keep pushing each other and keep, you know, competing and stuff like that. So that's, that's all it is. There's nothing deeper than what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the mob podcast mm -hmm. a little bit. What uh, sort of inspired you to do it with Marlo and Jihad last year and start it up last year? Um, you know, for me, I, I watch a lot of the I Am Athlete and, and the Pivot podcast, and I started watching it in 2020 during COVID. And last year during the uh, camp, uh, I was talking to Marlo and Jihad, and I let them know I was like, you know, I feel like we could do something like this and just have fun with it. And, you know, we were kind of just joking around, but we didn't take it serious. And then we approached the, you know, like the media team, and um, they said, well, yeah, we would like, like, they would love to help us. And then we went, started going undefeated, and then, like, they came back to us and was like, all right, if you guys are serious, now is the time. So, you know, we were just like, Oh, all right. And then we come in, we came in and saw the setup and we were like, oh, you guys are not playing. So because we saw that setup, we knew that we had to lock in and, uh, you know, just really just wanted to have fun with it. We didn't know it was going to become what it what it has become now, but it's definitely a blessing. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and you guys make it look easy. Mm-hmm. It makes me jealous a little bit as a guy that puts in the work. But what's maybe the, the toughest part or the most challenging part that you didn't realize And now that you're actually turning on the mic and hitting record and doing it? I know for me, uh, just – no, we're like I think for me after a loss, um, you got to come in and you yeah. got you got to deliver. You know, I, I, that's something that I added to my resume. So you can't you can't not do your job based off of how you feel. So uh, I try to approach my everyday life like that. And um, I have a show, I have a job to do on that podcast. And people come up to me and they they are always looking forward to it. So it's not about how I feel; it's about giving the people what they want. Yeah, that's a good mindset, Caleb. One of the leaders here, and we appreciate you taking some time with us. For sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's Caleb Bocachuku, guys. You can catch him on the field down in Tallahassee. Noon kick against the Seminoles this Saturday.